on that yet. There you go. All right, welcome to uh, the LBCA Coaches Corner. Um, we've had uh, two episodes and uh, uh, seem to be you know, pretty good viewership on the first two episodes. So uh, we're going to start uh, interviewing several head coaches from around the state just um, to, to so that we can get to know the head coaches a little bit better, but also just to maybe discuss a few hot topics you know, throughout the state that's going to be affecting the Louisiana baseball coaches. Uh, and then um, – you know, just talk about, uh, you know, the, the career path that people have taken to get where they are and how they've built their programs. And so uh, our first um, just solo interview here uh, for the LBCA Coaches Corner is going to be uh, uh, Lonnie Landry from the uh, from Ascension Episcopal and down in Lafayette. So, uh, Coach Landry, I appreciate you joining us on the uh, episode of the LBCA Coaches Corner. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you, and I would, if you would, just introduce yourself as far as you know your your career, kind of your uh, your path you took in playing baseball, and uh, how that led you into coaching. Well, um, you know, I, I actually I went to high school in Tallahassee, Florida, and but I'm from Louisiana, and I ended up um, being fortunate to get a, a just a big time scholarship. Uh, I think the coach gave me about a thousand dollars to go play at an NAI school. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, it turned out to be a blessing. Um, the guy that's still at my college, it was a Flagler College in St. Augustine, Florida. They're Division Two now, but back then we were NAIA, and you know that was my only opportunity to actually go and play. And I, you know, I jumped on it, and um, it was one of the most uh, amazing things I'd ever done. Um, you know, college baseball I thought was taught me a lot about life, about baseball and uh, relationships. You know, I think we all talk a lot about how important relationships are, especially as we get older. And the the coach over there now, he, he was my head coach back, you know, in 90, which is a long time ago. And, you know, he had a big, big impact on me. And I ended up, you know, playing three years over there. And, uh, you know, by the grace of God, I was fortunate enough to, to go in the draft at my junior year and played about four and a half years of minor league baseball and met a lot of people along the way. And when I got released, um, I ended up coming back to Lafayette. I had a brother that was playing at, at Turlands Catholic. And at the time, the head coach was Chad Ferris, and they had just won a state championship, and he was looking for a, an assistant coach. And, you know, the, the crazy thing is, is I had played a lot of college baseball, played a lot of professional baseball, and didn't know a lick about coaching. And I was very, very fortunate enough to play for a, a head coach that really knew the game and taught me a lot. And I still use a lot of his stuff. Uh, along the way today um, I ended up being an assistant for three years and then going to and then he left and I was you know asked to be the head coach at Cherylands for five years and I had some good players and I got out of coaching for a year and then I ended up getting back in about a year later where I'm at now and I've been at Ascension Episcopal for I'm going on my 12th year, and the funny thing is, is we go when I first basically started the program, we were basically eighth and ninth graders, and for two years, um, I ended up getting the snot beat out of me like for two years, and I think our first two years we were and we were combined ten and fifty, and you know wow. you, you want to talk about humble pie, you know and throughout it all, you know, I just continue to work, continue to work. And a few years in, in, into uh, head coach at Ascension Episcopal, I was grateful to, to hire, you know, coach uh, Scott McCullough. And then I was able to add on with uh, Tim Como, who was another head coach at Catholic High Nobury at one time. And then uh, Jay DiMaggio joined us. And, you know, it, it seems like when, when, we all got together and I hired those three coaches as my assistants. The program really, really started to bloom and turn into what it is today. And, you know, I'm very, very fortunate to be surrounded by 
not only three good baseball coaches, but really three good men who care about the kids a lot. And even, you know, when I say this all the time, even though I'm the head coach, I still learn a lot from those guys. Uh, you know, every day I'm in, I'm in their presence. Well, the uh, that's kind of leads me into the I guess our next topic. Um, you know, next question for you is. Um, you know, coming along this line and obviously you got a chance to play college baseball and some minor league baseball. And uh, you've already mentioned a couple of coaches uh, um, that you were uh, either an assistant for or now guys that are assistant for you. Who are some of the major influences um, in your um, in your coaching career? Um, you know, guys that, you know, kind of led you along the path, but also uh, guys that um, that, you know, you can pick up a phone and or send a text message to and, um, you know, and, and get some advice from? Well, you, you know, I still contact my college coach probably once every few weeks. And whenever I have something that's, you know, on my mind about the game, I, I normally call him. Um, a guy that really, really had a big impact on me, no one would know his name, but he was my high school football coach. and His name was Mike Rodriguez, and he actually played – for the University of Miami and played for the uh, – I think he played for the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers way back when. And and he's one guy that kind of led me to – he had such a big impact on my life in high school that, you know, when I chose this career path, I, ju I just hoped that I would touch one kid like the way that he touched me when I was, a, a, you know, a, a young – I wouldn't say reckless, but not knowing what direction I was going. And he kind of took – show me the way, hey, look, this is the way you need to go. Um, you know, and I still talk to uh, Chad Ferris a lot about baseball. And, and, you know, he helped me along. He helped me a lot as far as, and like I mentioned earlier, it, although I played a lot, I still didn't know all the ins and outs of the coaching. And, and I say this all the time, coaches only, when you know, when you get into high school, coaches only about 10% of the work, the rest is – everything outside the lines as far as in the classroom, transportation, uniforms, you know, all the stuff that no one really sees. Yeah. The, um, you know, you, you mentioned earlier about Ascension Episcopal and, you know, been there, um, you're beginning your 12th year there. And uh, you and I were talking before we started recording, you know, the, uh, Ascension Episcopal is, uh, is, is fairly new, you know, only been really been in existence for 12 years and you've been the head coach now. Uh, for 11 of those 12 years. Well, over that time, I mean, you've you've had some really, you know, really, really good teams and had some, you know, been blessed with some some good players and had some success over the last several years. You know, kind of tell us a little bit about that path that uh, that you took in building that program to where it is today. Well, you, you know, the, the, the one word that always sticks out with uh, successful programs is not always, you know, state championships. Um, I always say uh, just consistency. And I think, you know, way back when I started here, I haven't changed much from back then to now. And I think that I've been pretty consistent with everything as far as uh, discipline-wise, expectations, work, eth work ethics. Um, nothing has changed, you know. And I think what's, what's helped us along the way is, you know, the coaches staff has been together for, I, I think we're going on five or six years now. And when you have the same coaches and the same voices and the same people saying the same thing um, throughout the season and nothing's really new to those guys and not hearing th something, you know, off the wall, I think that really make that plays a big part in, in all programs, uh, just yeah, with, with the consistency and, and not a high turnover rate on, on the staff. Absolutely. The, um, you know, there, there's no doubt about that. I mean, just the consistency among staff, you know, can, you know, it, it can only be beneficial to the kids. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of uh, just thought popped into my head and you and I didn't talk about this before we, we recorded. So I'm going to kind of hit you um, just off the top of your head, you know, beginning coaching, you know, of course, like you said, you know, you got a chance to play, you know, obviously high school ball, college ball, a little bit of professional baseball, You've been coaching now for, you know, 12, 13 years. Um, what's one of the things in coaching, you know, and you can get into uh, several different aspects of this, but what's one thing that maybe you started out, you know, 
teaching something this particular way, but over the years, over the, 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 the path that you've taken over the last 12, 13 years, that has drastically changed. And now you teach it something totally different now. Um, you know, I had this conversation with, with uh, administrator uh, during the week and it wasn't necessarily on the coaching aspect, but it, it also can pertain to the coaching aspect is I, I think, um, you know, when I, when I, I think, when I first became a head coach, I was, I always thought, and, and this was many, many moons ago, and, but I always thought that it had to be black or white. And now as I get older and, you know, I've got older kids now and I actually have a new, uh, a one year old now, um, and, and almost like our own children. And probably you could say the same thing. You almost have to treat your, your kids differently. And I'm not, Absolutely. and I'm not talking about favoritism, um, uh, you know. And I'm talking about uh, you deal with things on, on on a different basis. Just because you, I think now, as you get older, you start to understand that there's different uh, circumstances with every child and every every player, and and you can't a- address every single player the exact same way. And you know, I I think that that has played a, a big role. Um, um, in, in my coaching philosophy, I don't really, you know, I, I, you know, and, and, and I'll say this and I'm not embarrassed to say it is when you get out of, of pro ball, you think, oh, I know it all this, that, and the other. And I think when a, a young coach and I'll speak for myself, um, you pro- I probably said too much of trying to uh, break down their fundamentals or explain a certain thing. And as I've gotten older, I think that I've gotten, I've tried to say even less and just try to be more basic because I think, you know, I, I think uh, when you, when you saying too much on the coaching side of it, kids are getting so dang uh, confused and they can't completely miss the boat of what you're trying to get across to them. Yeah. No, I like what you said there about the, especially the, um, the kids. I mean, because there's, you know, and I know you and I both are on the private school side of it, but even on the private school side of it, I mean, we, we deal with, you know, different types of kids. I mean, we, we deal with some kids that come from, you know, whether it be from broken homes, um, you know, from uh, divorced parents, um, you know, some, you know, that some are being raised by a single parent, um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of different circumstances and it. And and I, I totally agree with you. It can't always be black and white. It's uh you've got to take into consideration where that kid's coming from, how he learns, you know, it may be different from another, from the way another kid learns. And, uh, no, I, I, I really like what you said about all that. That's, um, I mean, that, that's really good. Um, yeah. And then, and, and, you know, John, it also, I mean, it, you know, I think we always say this, that our baseball field is our classroom. Well, it, you know, it, it pertains in the classroom as well. You know, everyone has different learning styles. Yes. And, and I think if you if you use that same logic on the baseball field, um, I think, you know, I think it works. Yes. And you, um, you know, talking about the, uh, um, you know, the second point there that you made. Um, it's a, um, you know, when we when we when we're teaching kids and we're working with kids, I mean, it's a um, we've always got to be considerate uh, of the way a kid learns, you know, we've got to understand those type of things, but the, uh, but, but what you also said about saying less a lot of times, you know, I've been reading a lot of books lately and on leadership and those type of things. And, and, and that's a lot of this, the leadership comes back to that is, you know, when you teach them, you teach them. And then, you know, at some point you've got to turn them loose and let them go and play, you know, and uh, I know uh, over the past several years for me personally, you know, I've been in the dugout, but I mean, the entire game, I let somebody else coach third, you know, coach first. Uh, and, and I've really enjoyed um, that aspect of it, of just being in the dugout and managing the game and, and just talking to kids when they come in, making adjustments, those type of things. So, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, the old saying, you know, less is more. That's and, right. Uh, so uh, a couple of just some topics, you know, from the, you know, from LBCA, um, just changing, you know, changing gears here that, we've dealt with over the past several years, you know, one of them being the pitch count, you know, we've, uh, 
Uh, we've made adjustments to pitch counts. You know, of course, the LHSA, you know, and Mr. Bodine and, and, and his committees and you and I both have been on, um, uh, I say executive committees, but really it's more advisory committees for the LBCA and discussing pitch count and different things like that. Um, so just share with us real quick, you know, kind of your thoughts on the pitch count and, um, you know, how to, you know, how, how you go about managing, you know, something like that during games. Well, I, I think I think early on in the season, I, I think all of us, that, you know, um, we all pretty careful with our guys' arms, and you know, we're not going to let those guys throw too much. And you know, when when guys, as as much as you want to win a game, when it, when the guys getting close to the pitch count, the limit, um, I always take into consideration of going and asking asking the the pitcher, hey, how do you feel? Can you, can you give us, can you give us another, another inning, you know? And I, I, I like to think that for the most part, most kids are competitors and I don't think any of my kids are going to tap out, out of fear or anything that, you know, and I think for the most part today, the, the kids actually get a little bummed out when you say, Hey man, you get close to your limit. Uh, you got to come out of the game. Uh, but you know, as much as we, we think that these kids can throw more, um, you know, it, it's kind of out, out of our control, you know, and, you know, and, you know, the rules are made to, to abide by, and, you know, we have to abide by the rules. So I, I think later on in the season, I think we spoke maybe uh, two, two years ago in Baton Rouge and tried to say, can we, you know, increase the pitch count at the end of the year? And, it didn't happen, but, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, I'm okay with, with where it's at right now. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think that, uh, you know, I, I, pitching is one thing that's always been, you know, kind of near and dear to me. You know, that's one thing I've worked with a lot of our kids on. And, you know, that's one of the things that and you made, made the mention of, you know, asking a kid how he feels. And, uh, you know, that's what, I want I want a kid to know, you know, not only uh, you know to be able to make adjustments mechanically, but I want to know how I mean how his arm feels. He needs to he needs to understand that, you know what what he feels like going into a game, what he feels like during the game, you know when his time is up, you know when he feels like he has no more, you know, and and, and be honest with us. And uh, but yeah, pitch counts always, you know, it's been a big deal over the past few years, and and, and there's been some. Um, you know, some adjustments made, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm kind of like you. I think where we are right now in the pitch count is, um, I think we're we're sitting at a pretty good spot. You know, and uh, I, I don't see you know many of us you know really abusing that that kind of thing. And um, one other topic, you know, again, you know, you and I both being select schools, you know, being at private schools. You know, we were able to go to the two out of three. Um, you know, in, in, over the last few years. Uh, two out of three series for the uh, well. Really, we only play two rounds before we get to go to the state tournament. So ours is a regional round and quarterfinal round. Um, what do you think about the two out of three format? I know the uh, you know the the two A through five A schools um, are, are planning to write a proposal uh, to um, the non-select schools. Obviously, are planning to write a proposal to to get the by district round. Uh, two out of three, and, and hopefully that'll be voted in this coming January. Um, but um, just share with us how that's affected you guys, and um, and what what you, just your thoughts on the two out of three. Uh, I, I I didn't know how I'd feel about a two out of three uh, before it, it ever happened. You know, I always thought, oh, you know, we're, we're not going to have enough pitchers and this that the other, and and once we did, um, man, it was a blast. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, the players loved it. Uh, I think you had to really, really be, uh, as, as a coaching staff, you had to be really, really strategic about what you were doing. Um, but I, I think if we, if they do propose, if the proposal does pass to where we could get, you know, in the finals, semifinals and finals with, with that format, um, man, I think it'd be a, a blast. You know, I, mean, yeah. I think it would, I think, you, you know, it would it would really depend on who had the best number two. Yeah, that's right. Or the best number three, for that matter, as well. So, uh, you know, I, I'm all for it. I, I think it would be a, you know, 
I like being in the ballpark. Uh, I, I love my players, and I like being around them. And you know, the more I can be around them, the a lot more fun this the profession is. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the two out of three, man. It's been, you know, again, I, I'll totally agree with you, man. It's been a lot of fun. You know, it's uh, it can be nerve wracking for us yeah. as coaches. You know, especially you know, losing that first game. And I've been in that situation uh, a couple of times over the past couple of years, losing game one and having to come back and win game two and three. But, man, it is a lot of fun. And uh, uh, I've really enjoyed it. And, and like you said, I mean, it, you know, it gives us an extra, you know, a few games around our kids. And uh, anytime we can be around our kids, I mean, it's just a, you know, chance to grow those relationships. Uh, last couple of things real quick. And, um, you know, again, I didn't ask you this before we started recording, so I'm going to throw this out at you. During this time, during this uh, the quarantine time back, you know, March through May especially, um, where we really couldn't do hardly anything, and then obviously we opened up a little bit in um, uh, June, was able to, you know, some schools anyway, able to start workouts and those type of things. But during this time, what have you learned um, or what have you done to, you know, try to improve – you know, maybe not only your 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 coaching style or your your uh, knowledge of the game, or it could be you know spiritual life or whatever it may be. What have you done that is uh, that that you feel like has helped you during this time? Well, you know, and I've I've said this I've said this a lot. I, I think all of us, and we all spoke uh, early on, and in, in, you know, through March, that you know, I think all of us were having pity parties about not not being able to play and not finishing the season and um you know and then i think once all of us realized that you know there's people dying there's people losing their jobs um there's a lot there's a lot bigger things to, to be stressed about you know I, I i can honestly say you know i, I missed i did miss the game um i spent a lot of family time with my family um, you know, I probably had, you know, you know, when, when, when COVID first hit, the quarantine first hit, I think my son might have been maybe four months old. So I basically got to spend every day with them for about five months. Um, awesome. that, that, you know, that was awesome. I got to spend a lot of time with my middle daughter. Um, I spent a lot of time with my wife. And so, you know, from the family, because that's time that I, I don't think any baseball coaches ever had. That's right. You know, and, you know, so I, I think that was, you know, I think that improved a lot. We were like everyone. We were probably sitting at the dinner table at least twice a day, which, you, you know, as well as, as myself, you, you know, from usually from March to the end of June, you know, we're lucky if we, we eat with our family, you know, on, on uh, Sundays for, after church. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, I I think that that was a big 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 plus, and I and I heard a lot of coaches, uh, you know, saying the same thing. Uh, people were spending a lot more time with their family, time that they never had before. Um, you know, and and I kind of took into account too, even our players. You know, most of our players, and you know, at a small school like myself, you know, once they start football workouts in July, they're going you know, July, August, all the way through the next year of either football, baseball, basketball. So, you know, it was, it was, I, I heard a lot of parents say, you know, I was disappointed in the season, but it was kind of different that we actually got to go on a, on a family vacation for the first time in God knows how long. Yeah. 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 It's definitely, uh, you know, I've made, comments to several people as far as the quality family time that we were able to have, you know, my daughter was home from college and, right. uh, you know, and just, uh, you know, we ate more, like you said, we ate more times together around the dinner table, you know, in the, especially March through May than, yeah. um, than we had probably in the last year, year and a half easily. And, um, yeah, that, that family time was just amazing. Can you, something you know, that I, I was fortunate uh, that our kids, uh, you know, they they kept pretty much like everybody throwing on their own or hitting or whatever. Yeah. So we were we were fortunate enough to to able to play in the month of June. When, you know, when we got into the phase where we could play, we you know my high school, my older kids played. Um, I don't know, maybe fifteen games, and 
you know, they were, they were, it, it was kind of cool because our first time meeting, it was almost like a family reunion. They were just so happy to see one another. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it showed me how much they do mean to one another and, yeah, and how close my team actually is. So that, that was, that was kind of special to see. Yeah. I think that's what, uh, you know, I, I know that was talking to several coaches, you know, we, we missed, it showed us how much we missed our kids, you know, just not being around our kids for that period of time. And, uh, you know, it's more about base. It's, it's more than just baseball, I should say. It's about being, you know, that family, that that brotherhood, those type of things, just being around them, joking with them, goofing off with them, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Last thing, real quick, and, uh, you know, you, you and I have been in this profession for quite a while and, um, you know, seen a lot of things, uh, learned a lot, failed a lot, you know, done, you know, just had to learn through failure, those type of things. And, um, you know, but one thing, I mean, some some young coaches out there hopefully listening to this, you know, whether they're first-time head coaches or, or they've only been a head coach for a couple of years, um, whatever the case may be, you know, what advice would you give to some, um, you know, either, you know, new coaches or new head coaches? Um, you know, w one thing I always say is I was very, very fortunate enough to be an assistant coach. And uh, I was only an assistant coach for three years. I, I wish I would have been an assistant coach for uh, five years. Uh, um, so I, I think for, for a young guy that really loves a game, that wants to get in a profession, don't be so caught up on being a head coach right away. Um, there's, there's, there's so many other things other than just the game that you can – uh, learn by being an assistant and and you know i would i would say you know go find a good person who happens to be a good coach and to work under him and and, the, and that person will lead you in the right direction um in, in on the field and off the field and um so th that that would be my advice is go be an assistant coach and and learn you know, about the ins and the outs of a head coach, because if, if uh, you know, if you jump right into the, the head coaching role, it, you're almost setting yourself up for failure. And, and, and not about whether you have good players or not good players, or you know the game or you don't know the game, or you were a good player. There's so many other things on the high school level that, you know, Unless you go through it as a head coach, you have no idea that it even exists. You know, and, and it's it's so much. And I say this all the time. Uh, Jeremy Trihon and myself talk about it a lot. There's, you know, there's so many different aspects that you just don't know until you actually get into it. Oh yeah, and absolutely. That that would be that would be my main advice to, to go be an assistant coach for a few years um, because your time will come. And, you know, and, and I think we've all seen it that young coaches get into the assistant coach role and they're, and that team's winning some games. And, and uh, you know, I, I've seen it where assistant coaches kind of backstab their head coaches because they think that they can do it. And, you know, I, I just, I, you know, I just – that bothers me a lot. Um, so go, go and be an assistant coach and, and trust that that head coach is leading you the right direction. And good things will happen after that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Coach Landry, I appreciate you taking your time out on a Saturday afternoon to uh, to um, be the first solo interview here on the LBCA Coaches Corner. So um, I uh, really appreciate the, uh, the – the just first of all, just getting to know you and being, you know, just the friendship that we've built over the past uh, couple of years, especially being a part of the LBCA – you know, kind of advisory board or whatever you want to call us. Uh, but, um, but it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun getting to know you and uh, have a lot of respect for you. So I really appreciate, uh, appreciate you coming on with me. Well, John, I always, I always enjoy, you know, first and foremost, you, you know, I, I always, I, I always try to catch up to you at the special day BCA because, you know, and I know y'all win some games, but I know there's a lot more th than just the, the baseball aspect of it. And, you know, and I think everyone knows that you're, you know, you're, you're a big man of God and it's always enjoyable to, to hear, hear your words. And, and, you know, it's always good stuff and wise stuff. And 
you know, I, I've as well, I, I've enjoyed it, to get to know you and to learn from you as well and, and listen to your words. So I, I appreciate you reaching out and, and doing this with me. Well, thanks, Coach Landry. Appreciate those kind words. And uh, um, hopefully, hopefully we have some several viewers that will that'll look this, um, watch this video, I should say. And um, it's uh, – I think there's some young guys out there. I mean, even some older coaches like myself, I mean, that, uh, that can learn, uh, from words of wisdom from, uh, from coach Landry. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, um, uh, this episode of the LBCA coaches corner and, um, we'll, uh, we'll see you again next week, uh, with our next solo interview. So I uh, hope you all have a good afternoon. Thanks, John. Thank you.